Come on, man. She's a community activist or organizer. They said she's a surrealist blues poet, but I know she's not just one thing. They say she moves between different mediums, but when she steps into your proximity, she definitely leaves an impact. I'm proud to have her on this show today, man. Poets right now is indicative of the times are much needed, so necessary. They always have been. I commend those who um, decide to take that journey through poetry and stick with it and sustain it. Sometimes it's a rewardless job. You mm -hmm. know, you put a lot of energy into your thought process. You're not just thinking. Um, you're not just grabbing words off the surface. You actually got to go in deep. You almost have to lose yourself to receive the energy, to receive the words yeah. that make up these poems that are more than just poems. They're extremely powerful. And um, this particular person, I want to commend her. She's paid her dues. She's a New Rican uh, Grand Slam champion. Woo! She's a, 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 a Grand Slam champion, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Give it a big round. I think she was the youngest out of the, the New York Soul Cafe. Mm -hmm. All right, back in 07, 08. The reason why I know, because I used to go to the New York Soul Cafe. I've seen her before. And then in Ghana, my brother Vic Mensa was like, you got to hook up with Aja Monet. You got to have her on the show. Mm -hmm. And when we came back from Ghana, uh, he made a note to call me to make sure we made this happen. He he didn't have to, but the fact that he did, I knew it was important uh, to him, and it's important to our culture and our community. She's worked on this project with many people. Good friends of mine are also included. Salute to Christian Scott. Give him a big round of applause. Yes. Um, my man, Weedy Bramer, who I was just with this weekend at the— Blue Note Jazz Festival with Robert Glasper. Nice. And Weedy grew up playing drums, playing percussion under my sister, who's a master dancer. Fascinating. Uh, a culturalist and spirituality You're all so of You're so tapped in, Sway. Truly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, people around me are. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> okay, you know, but um, those pockets of my life I don't often uh, speak on. Yeah. Uh, especially uh, depends on the mediums I'm on, you mm -hmm. know, uh, when I... Uh, decide to talk about that sort of thing. I thought it was necessary today. I want to welcome you to the show. Give her a big round of applause, man. Keep a, keep the applause going, Torch. Woo! Brooklyn's Woo! finest. Yeah. The new album is when the poems do what they do. Mm -hmm. Please welcome Aja Monet Woo! here. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Aja. We do not get to hear enough poetry on the radio. What are your thoughts? Hear yours, Black Joy. That piece we played was Black Joy. Thank you so much for playing it. I think, you know, I'm excited. I feel really honored and grateful to be here. There's so many poets who paved the way, who came before us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I came in today repping um, Mums, yes. Mums the Schemer, who's one of the greatest hip hop poets to ever live. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that I stand on the shoulders of greats. And so I'm here in homage to that. So I feel really honored. Yeah, who are some of those greats? I'd love to say their names. Yeah, okay, well, we have moms. Mm -hmm. um, we have to shout out, you know, June Jordan, Jane Cortez, mm -hmm. Sekou Sundiata, Ooh. Amiri Baraka, mm. The Last Poets, Sonia Sanchez, I mean, the list keeps going, uh, and Tazaki Shange. Mm -hmm. There's so many people who paved the way for us, um, and I just continue to be in awe. Like, the culture, the mainstream culture may not know but those who know, know. Mm -hmm. And it's always been the uh, undercurrent of every movement, every cultural shift has always been there's people in the in the corners, in the shadows of this country who have really brought art and theater and um, poetry to the masses in their own way, mm -hmm. you know, by the influences and the inspiration and the teaching and the mentorship. I mean, so many greats were a part of helping make movements happen in our country. You sound like you're one of those greats. I'm, I'm curious to, as a poet, how do you recognize when that cultural shift is taking place? How do you sense it and, and, and are inspired by it? And, and when's the last time you felt that way? Well, I think every generation has its moment, you know, has its, its real presence if we're aware and we're present to it. You just have to always recognize that history's made in the now. Mm -hmm. So you gotta live up to the now always. You know, you gotta rise to the occasion. And I think studying, learning the form so you could break it is is always the best tradition, the best practice. But I think when you think about cultural movements and shifts, 
you probably sometimes don't even realize it. I mean, yeah. you've been a part of huge cultural shifts and moments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're just living. You know what I mean? And so, so long as you show up to the culture with your authentic, you know, most vulnerable, loving self, um, you will you will see over time. You will be able to look back and say, "Wow, like." That dot led to this dot that led to this dot. And yeah. that's why this person was able to do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you think about it in time. Time always lets you know. Time. Right. Aja Monet is here. I want to take a quick call. I'm going to do something different. Uh, we got Anthony from Yonkers on the line. Hey, and Ant. she got a new project what when up? the poems do what they do. It's out now. So, so go ahead and stream it. Go ahead, Ant. Good morning, everybody. Hey, hey. Good morning. Yo. Good morning. Good morning, Aja. Good morning. My question for you is, when it comes to your writing process, do you consider yourself more of a storyteller or a wordsmith? And along with that, who are mm. some of your favorite storytellers and wordsmiths in hip hop? Hmm. Ooh, that's mm. a good one. I think I'm a bit of both. A lot of times I see myself as um, maybe more like a documentarian or a scribe of the time. So there's moments where language if you're working with poetry you're dealing with the the power and the magic and the rhythm and tone and vibration of language so it it is word smithery i guess <laughs> make that up but um if i think of some of my favorite storytellers uh you know tupac nas yeah. um i yeah. mean you know kendrick lamar yeah um big pun you know um lauren hill there's just, there's too many to go, you know, Mob Deep. I mean, I think there's just so many other ways that, that poetry has played a role in hip hop that helps it helps us tell our stories. And so those are the ones that come to mind right now. Hey, thanks for your call, man. You a super citizen, brother. That's why in the morning. Let's yeah. go to, uh, where you at? What's, what country are you in, Emmanuel? Hey, Emmanuel. I'm, uh, hey, yo, what's up? Peace, love, and joy to y'all, man. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, from Canada. I'm from Canada, Winnipeg. Okay, he's right. in Winnipeg. All right, my brother. Say hello to Aja. I just wanted her to know that she's getting callers from all over the world. <laughs> right. That's really what it was. Because I, no. Aja <laughs> said to me, hey, you just played the song on the radio. Does that mean everybody in the city can hear it? <laughs> <laughs> the world. The world. I talked to you from Canada, man, all the way. Wow. All the way. Mind blown. So, <laughs> I, peace and love to you, Queen. Um, so, my, I was, uh, you know, I was listening to Back Joy and, I kept you. You kept saying diaspora, diaspora, diaspora. So I wanted to ask, and again, the vibe it was giving me was Fela Anikula Tokuti, which is AKA Afro beat, is background type shit. So I wanted to know: Are you really tapped in into Afro beat at all, or it was just a coincidence that sounded like that in my in my head because I'm Nigerian? Well, well, of course, that's, you know, African people, no matter where we are, we're tapped into to some cultural mm -hmm. current that connects us. So I think that is in the, it's in there. It's in the it's in the blood. It's in the ethos. It's in the voice. It's in the soul, the spirit. And it's going to it's going to come up. It's going to show up in the work. Um, but, yeah, I am tapped in. I've been doing a lot of work in the continent. That poem particularly was written long before I had ever first stepped foot on, you know, African soil. But I think about the diaspora always being connected to home we're in that in between so we dance in that in between you know hey, hey. you know what that's so graceful man for real that's what's mm. up i mean make sure you support her project though this is her debut album yes. when the poems do what okay they do. when the poems do what they do, do what debut they do. album <laughs> out of all you these years what? this is her first time putting out an so album good. I know, and I brought you an actual she, record. She brought me oh. vinyl, Emmanuel. Yes, look so at this, good. beautiful. It's Classic. amazing. This looks like one of those 1974 oh, so Isaac Hayes covers. Yeah, so yeah. Good. right. And also very regal. Hey, Emmanuel, you're a citizen, brother. Shout That's out to Delphine Diallo. What, is, what does this mean for you? It's, it's poet, poets don't get treated the best in the music no, business. No, we don't. Yeah, right in the entertainment business. No, we don't. Um, but I gotta say that people who recognize real. Recognize real, you know That's what I mean? It. I'm All just right. grateful.
Okay, I want you to meet Tracy G and Mike Muse and Oshun again. Okay, well, we kind of did meet many years ago. When Aja walked in, I was like, girl, you have been my gateway drug mm. into the world of spoken word, into mm. poetry, because Aja had performed at my college, Pace University, oh. many years ago and killed it. Standing ovation, all of that. Her name was always bouncing up and down the hallways of Pace University. Mm. When I was in college, I was studying for journalism. And when I finally broke into the industry through journalism and the blogosphere came up, I remember so many journalists being very protective over that title mm. and not wanting journalism to feel synonymous with blogging, right? Mm. For you and your lane, Aja, how important is, how protective are you over the title poet? Because sometimes I hear that used for a wide variety of artists, and I wonder if technically they are poets or if the technicalities don't really matter. Yeah, I mean, I, I hold the title very highly. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody should be called a poet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. people call me a purist, but I think that it's it's really just about tradition, you know? It's what tradition you stand in and what legacy you you, you believe you walk in. And I think that... You know, you don't look at a doctor or a surgeon and say, well, you know, you kind of work in the hospital, so mm -hmm. you're a surgeon. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's things that you have to study, learn, you know, commit yourself to, devote yourself to. It's a, it's really a, a, a devotion, you know? And so I think through that time and that devotion, you eventually become a master of that craft, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so the hope is that... Um, people understand that it's a craft. It actually requires work and study and commitment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't know that that's the case for many art forms these days. Mm -hmm. But I think because titles are thrown around and social media has made language and literature, and particularly words, sort of this thing that everybody feels they can throw around very easily. We don't always know what we're doing when we're using right. language and when we're using words. And so somebody just being like, I woke up today. Smile. And it's like poem, <laughs> but <laughs> but it's but you want to know <laughs> where's where's the poetic you know technique. I think right. that's where that's where we start to actually understand what poets do with language and do to language okay. and the oral tradition is when what are the poetic techniques that are being used and and our education system is really you know is, is it's suffering lacking in that yeah yeah it's not teaching us. Can you name some us. of those techniques? So we can um, get familiar with Personification. It? Yes. Alliteration. Metaphor. Probably the biggest one is when you make a comparison between two unlike things and make them like. So if I said, you know, her hair is running water, that's a metaphor. Mm -hmm. I'm taking running water Ooh. and her hair and making them the same. They become, now in your mind, I've done something magical. I've just made her hair water. <laughs> Who says we couldn't do that? You know, that's what that's the power of language. So we know. got a hyena up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping bars, you whack rappers. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, whack poets. <laughs> whack whack poets. poets. <laughs> you ready? What's up? Oh, okay. <laughs> He's trying to instigate something over yeah. here. He's instigating. <laughs> I didn't know if that was our cue. All right. Okay. Mike Muse, you got a question? <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of that, I'm wondering what is your approach to your art of poetry? Because I listened to that single uh, that we just played, which I absolutely loved. It captured my attention in, in a way I didn't expect it to be captured. Normally for me, sometimes different poets and poetry can be unapproachable, right? But I felt like your poetry in that single was very approachable. You mm. talked about fraternities and sororities and probating and then you went straight to like religion and holy ghost and spirituality and just all the things i was connecting with and so how do you approach it to make it edit what is your approach to how you create your poetry mm, that's a very good question great well, edit too yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i think that when you're um when you understand what what poetic techniques are and what we're doing they're actually all like musical references, mm. right? So iambic pentameter, which is about how many syllables are in a line. It's about, it's sounds. It's like how many beats am I putting into a line so that it could fall on the ear a certain way. That's why people loved Biggie and they loved Shakespeare was because he was, he was speaking in a certain rhythm. So I think that that falls in line with how I consider what I do. It's musical. You know, I consider what I do, I'm a word musician, <laughs> you know, and then on top of that, it's a list poem. List poems are probably some of the easier ways to catch people um, who are not necessarily used to some of the 
the ways that people form language, you know, or form poetry. And I want to say Black Black Joy particularly is a poem that's really special to my heart because I wrote that in my living room with my brother, um, Daniel Agnew, who um, transitioned mm. about two months ago. And I just want to shout out um, all of my community in Florida and South Florida. We lost a giant. And um, yeah, and I, and, I'm, and I know that I could not do the work I'm doing also without my community and the people who helped inspire some of those works. So I was going back and forth with him like, what do you think about this? And he was coming back with me like, yeah, yeah, but you can't forget this part, you know? Cause it was like, what brings us joy? You know, and I looked to my community, like what are the things that bring us joy? And that was the moment where I got to actually have real time, you know, feedback from somebody I love who helped inspire that poem. Well, in my response, let that be affirmation because it made me smile when I was listening. I had my head down and those sounds like, oh, mm. and then I was like, oh. So yeah, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Aja Monet is here. Her new debut album, When the Poems Do What They Do. We're going to play a one of my, well, the first one we played was Black Joy. That was a piece I, I picked out and I just thought it was appropriate and the way I wanted to start the interview. But there's another one called What Makes You Feel Love. We're going to play that mm -hmm. in a second. But I want to let my niece who is also the producer and the host of Tea Time out of L.A., mm -hmm. who's here with us today. Give it up for Oshun! Oshun! <laughs> <laughs> so you got a question? I do have a question. So um, to my understanding, you are Afro-Latina. Mm -hmm. And as someone who is very like involved, you just, as your album and as your poem, you seem very involved in your culture and where you come from, mm. which I think is very important. I'm 15 and a lot of people my age just don't really do that anymore. They don't find the necessity of doing that. And I think it's really important that we have poets like you that keep that tradition going along. Mm. And my question for you is being an Afro-Latina, but how do you most, how do you like manage having, do you connect more with one side than the other? Like do you have to feel like you're more like African American than you are Latina, or do you think that you can have an even, like distribute a both? Mm, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't actually, um, I, n I never identified as Afro Latina. I just identify as an African black woman. You know, that's just the way it's 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 the way I see myself is the way I've lived. I do have Cuban, you know, and Puerto Rican heritage, um, but I also have Jamaican, and there's. African, you know, there's all types of stuff in there and it's very New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my experience, but my experience was always as a black woman growing up. So that's what it was a conscious decision for me at a very young age to make sure I identified as that. And I think that I never felt like I feel like the grouping and the identity brackets sometimes try to make us put pit us against each other. Um, and it, it further, you know, just I think emphasizes pain, trauma, and the the history of slavery, but who, who got dropped off first is 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 not really a discussion we should be arguing. It should just be, um, what is our, <laughs> you know, what yep. wh what is where do we want to be? Where do we want to go? Who how do we see ourselves? And I see myself as an African woman who looks forward to the liberation of people, all African people across the globe. You know, that's that's what we're working towards. You know. Beautiful question. That's my niece right there, by the way. Did I mention that, y'all? Yeah. So sure. hey, okay. Niece. Great answer. Um, we're going to go into this next song, and I'd love to have you do something live with everyone here. Is that Please. possible? Ooh. I just had LL freestyle for me. If In you, that seat. It's up to you at oh, this point. Oh, damn. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. Uh, what makes you feel loved? Oh, good question. Man, there's so many things that make me feel loved. I think presence, uh. being able to be present, um, deep gratitude, um, appreciation. Yeah, like there's there's many moments that I, I often look back on and I think about, well, what, what, what made me feel loved was just somebody seeing me. Yeah. Somebody mm -hmm. really seeing me, like my heart, you know. Um, and cherishing it and protecting and holding it with in right in the right hands, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. with the right sort of love and tenderness. I love that, man. Aja Monet, this is what makes you feel loved off of the When the Poems Do What They Do project. Mm -hmm. Gotta love it, man. When the poems do what they do, 
This is featured on Aja Monet's album, but that's not your voice. Holly, Lonnie Holly is a, a elder, um, incredible, incredible musician, visual artist, performance artist, and it was important to me to have um, him on the record, and that was a conversation that we had had back and forth. We were writing back and forth to each other, um, and that was an excerpt of that conversation, which which is one of my favorite things I've ever been a part of. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, happy to have you here. Mm-hmm. You know, when I when I mentioned you winning the um, the Grand Slam competition at New Rican Soul Cafe, I could I could see you almost humbly put your head down and, and blush. Mm-hmm. Which led me to believe you're similar to me. Like we hear these accolades things. You asked me about my career outside in a in lobby. You see I couldn't even give you nothing. Mm-hmm. I immediately became humbled and and blushed, mm-hmm. you know. But there have been some remarkable tempos in my career. And, mm-hmm. I, and you told me you should be grateful for them and recognize them, which I do. Mm-hmm. And I want to be grateful for some of yours. Mm-hmm. Because we don't hear about the poet's victories. Right. Mm-hmm. We do not hear about your victories. <laughs> we hear about the struggle mm-hmm. all the time. Or you are telling us about life. What do you consider? What have been some of the tempo moments that you found yourself in a room like, I can't believe this just happened? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Right now. <laughs> I'm like currently living currently. in that moment. You in that moment? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm existing in that moment. Good. Um, you know, I, one of my, my godfathers and, and elder poets is um, Abi Oduno Awoli of The Last Poets. Whoa. The night, the day that I met him, I was competing in a youth poetry competition um, that ultimately changed my life and brought me into a community of poets across New York City that I discovered and, and found home um, with. But meeting him, the the, the, the trajectory, the political um, education that I got being mentored by him was a huge, huge moment for me, pinch me kind of moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, seeing Maya Angelou read at oh. the Schomburg. Oh, man. You know, oh, Lucille Clifton. Um, sitting in Quincy Troops, you know, off a uh, house reading with some of the best poets of our time. I mean, there's so many, so many, so many moments. I actually remember when I first met you, which I was about to tell you, and you was like, wait till we on air. I was a teenager. It was right after I won. I was right after I won that youth poetry competition. Mm-hmm. And it was in Irv- outside of Irving Plaza. Yes. And there was an event, I think like actually low key, he should not be named the rush it was one of them rush events the i don't know if you were the rush oh. philanthropic event. oh yes i used to host them every yes. year the and christmas, there was one christmas jam christmas that you jam. did yeah. and i and i read poetry for one of those and i'll never forget that moment because every moment as a child growing up like when you go through some of the things we go through anything that just gives you an ounce of affirmation in what you're doing is a moment to be proud and grateful because it keeps you going. It gives you the ammunition to see the next thing and right. and believe that what you're doing is worth doing. So I just remember being on stage with you and being like, I'm with Sway. Like, <laughs> I'm doing poetry. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I introduced it. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think I, like, ran after you at, at, after, and I was like, you know, I'm a poet. I'd love to, you know, share a poem with you. It was just like... You know, it's those moments that you just try to capture um, being as present as you can and with deep gratitude and just praying that you get another moment to keep mm. keep you going, you know? Man, I'm about to tear up. Oh, yeah. let me, needs, come give me a hug. I'm, I'm getting, <laughs> getting sensitive right here. I remember this. This is why. Yeah, it's and the, really the, crazy. And, and, and I did that for seven years straight. Yeah. And it was one of my favorite events to do in the first few years he never remembered my name <laughs> but i didn't do it for that i did it for this yeah i did it for the i was kids. one of them kids wow oh, 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 so what up, man? oh. oh circle. my little niece over here doing good <laughs> <laughs> two nieces oh in the soon room. i got two nieces in the room wow yeah. what a perfect way to end this conversation with a poem yeah <laughs> <laughs> Got me. You want to go acapella? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Not Let's turn the mother's it. mics down for me, Torch, please. Okay, hopefully I remember this. Um, this poem is um, called Give My Regards to Brooklyn. On the humble, 
I be having these dreams where I'm people watching with Basquiat sitting on a curb on Bedford Ave, sipping Biraguas, talking about never thought I'd live to see the day. Could have sworn I saw Otis Blackwell walking out the corner store in Atlantic Ave, smoking a Lucy, whistling a new tune for Elvis to cover. And it was gully right because I caught Biggie on a stoop in bed selling dope to a hipster with ready to die tattered across the pale of his arms. Hadn't seen a hoopty in a while when old dirty bastard pulled up off me a ride to the pink houses and suddenly a handsome mocha man sitting on a nearby fire escape calls my name. I could tell it was Jackie by the dodger stitched across his chest. He told me I miss home and then it all fades to black. When I woke, the blue moon was sprawling out of its hiding place, limbs hanging over the shoulders of night after lovers had abandoned their bodies, laughing in the corners of each other. I was a full tent lamppost staring at the sky's cheekbones shy of stardust through the blinds of J-train tracks. This is how it feels to dream of being moonlight in East New York, a concrete plant collecting whispers of bodega blues, darling sunrise tickles drumbeat hips, swaying through the air of Sasson, and I envy the morning swag. Boom boxes hold our windows open in July. We face our fears on the cyclone call. Romance, a stroll along the boardwalk in Coney Island. Head knots pay respect on B boys playing scully in the street. We used to buy our kicks from City Line and roll a blunt for our fallen soldiers and spark a generation in love with spray cans and naked tenement buildings. Graffiti, the spirits of hustlers with bubble letters. Mr. Softy Summers meant stealing Abuela Santo offerings for Tweety Bird on a popsicle stick playing hopscotch on the broken sidewalk, eavesdropping on front stoop gossip, hair braiding, fingers dancing between strands of air. Brothers get caught and gangs get caught and street corners get caught. Thrown against the hood of cop cars, seen one too many handcuffs on the wrists of black and brown skin. We dock slave ships on our shores daily. No Rikers Island like a country home. I'm convinced my father conceived me in Kings County arraignments. While daydreaming of freedom, I owe my life. I owe my life to the woman who stopped my mother on the B-56 on her way to the abortion clinic and told her, you have a poet coming. Mm. Wow. wow. Chills. <laughs> you got to come back. <laughs> Mm. You got to come back. That was thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you remembered it, too. So much I can ask you about that poem, but we're going to leave it like there for for people to use their own imagination. How can people see you? What's next? Uh, Well, that's good to say uh, to ask. I'm going to I'm on tour. It's called the Why My Love Tour. Um, You can find all the dates on my website, ajmone.com. I'm on Instagram, on on Twitter, all the socials. Um, But yeah, listen to the record. Please listen to the record. And I hope, you know, live is one thing. I know everybody, um, we might not remember a time during this panorama we just experienced when we did not know if we would ever be able to experience live music and people in person again. So let us not take each other for granted. You know what I mean? So being able to do a show in person with people is probably the best and greatest gift in my life. And I hope to continue to be able to do that. So if you can come out to a show, and just show love, that's probably one of the best ways to engage and experience my work. I love it. Aja Monet, y'all. Wow. Um, you spell that A-J-A-M-O-N-E-T. Yes. A-J-A-M-O-N-E-T. Yes. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, And, and uh, be, have you in our presence. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for gifting us Thank this you all. today. Thank you so much Absolutely. For me. Continue. Uh, know that you have family here. You have tribe here. You know, and you now you have another platform you can add to your yes. list of resources, okay? Yeah. Anytime. Uh, we'll exchange. S- salute to Vic Mensa, too. Yeah, shout uh, out Vic. For, yeah. for, for pushing that. And thank you for telling me the story. I remember you, <laughs> which is crazy. And there's pictures out there. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere. Mm, Aja Monet. Vic didn't mention that. He didn't know, huh? No, he didn't even know. I, he didn't know? I love that you got a Basquiat shirt on, too. Yo, I'm looking at that with my Basquiat <laughs> yeah. today. You oh, see that? Wow. Yeah, that was on the first, yeah. Yeah, Heather, I wore my Basquiat today. I'm, I'm <laughs> oh, art. shut up, Slay. I told you you be tapped in. I'm tapped in, Heather. <laughs> Let me say this, too. Shout out to you, Asia. You are absolutely incredible. So, Aja, Much love. Say Aja. Aja. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Aja. Um, you are absolutely incredible. Thank you for today. Thank you. I appreciate you. 
Yeah, man. Um, you have one of the most legendary voices, by the way. Big facts. Let it be known. <laughs> well, you do. Like Mike Muse, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to your voice. It sent me straight. I was like straight to your Instagram. I saw your dates that are coming. Uh, I am an absolute appreciator of your work. Thank you. Thank you. That sound like collaboration happening. Yeah, let's do mm. it. <laughs> I love let's it. Let's do it. Oh. She's never said that. <laughs> oh. Uh, we got definitely. that on wax. Did you hear that? All right. Aja nah, Monet. She's, she's incredible. She's the truth. Yeah, absolutely, Heather. I appreciate that. Aja, thank you for coming by. Thank you. Thank you for Tell me you. your crew. Which crew? The crew here? Yeah, yeah, your yeah. crew. Yo, shout out to Yami. Yami she's one of my up? students. Yami so, was a student? Oh, wow. She was one of my students when I was teaching in, in schools here in New York City. And now she's literally my friend, my assistant, my f- just confidant. She's, she's just out that. here. She's a writer. She's yeah. a writer. Yeah, I can tell. Yami's a poet Yami as from, well? from the BX. Yes, uh-huh. she is a poet. From the Bronx? Yes. And Alex Rivera, and my other good friend from the BX. I got my little BX friends with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know the BX. The BX, the Bronx. You got to look at Alex's shoes. What do you Y'all think? Look at this. <laughs> <you. laughs> <laughs> great, great shoes. Do man. they look real though? They look right. No, Those okay. are dope shoes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I've never <laughs> seen Kool Aid color Nikes. That's it. That's Those it. are fly. Man. Yeah. Okay. All right, Alex. All right. Uh, Aja, thank you for coming through. Okay. Thank you. Love thank y'all. you to your team. Who's been lovely, incredible. Thank appreciate you. It. We appreciate you. Thank you yes, for my vinyl. Did. We coming back. Sway in the morning. Shave for five. <laughs>